factor six. So, Avery, can you come on up and find the big six for me? Good job. Can everybody see that at home? Dan, do you want to come up and see if you can find Joshua? The word where it would say Joshua? Yes, very good. All right, so we are in Joshua chapter 6 today. And if our story is found in the Bible, what does that mean about our story? Gavin? It's true. It's a true story, so it means this really happened, right? So it's not something that's make-believe or something that's pretend. It's something that is real, right? Yes. All right, so before we get started, though, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. We thank you for the time that you give to us to be here to bring the word and to um, uh, help us to understand who you are better and what it is that you would like for us to do. And we pray, Lord, and we ask that you will help us to not have distractions and that you will help Gavin's ankle to feel better. In your son's name I pray. Amen. All right, so... Who remembers who this guy is? It's the angel. Angel of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And who is this guy? Joshua. Joshua, that's right. So, the captain of the army of the Lord had come to Joshua, and Joshua fell on his face to the ground and worshiped in reverence. Joshua asked, what does the Lord say to his servant? Now that is a good way to respond to the Lord. Joshua called himself a servant. He was ready to serve and obey God, no matter what. So God told Joshua his plan to defeat the mighty city of Jericho. Joshua 6, 2 through 5, and we read this last week, but let's see it again. The Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all ye men of war. You shall go around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city of Jericho will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Then Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. So, Avery, put your dress down. What do you think Joshua should do? Do you think Joshua should trust and carry out God's plan? Or do you think Joshua should come up with his own idea? I think, I think I should listen. Should Joshua listen and obey God's plan? Or should Joshua come up with his own idea? God's idea. You think Joshua should do God's idea? Yeah? What about you, Avery? Mm -hmm. Listen to God. He should listen to God. And why do you think Joshua should trust and obey God? Why do you think he should do that? Um, because God is a good guy. God is a good guy, that's right. What else? Does God keep his promises? Yes. He does. And has Joshua seen God keep his promises before? Yes. Yes, he has. Do you remember when he did that? No. What happened with the... the um, not with the Jordan River. Do you remember? It's not the Red Sea, but it's similar to the Red Sea. What happened? They put their toes in and then there was no water. And who put their toes in first? Do you remember who that was who went first? Joshua. Not Joshua, but the priest carrying the ark, right? The, and the ark? Not the ark, the ark, the covenant. This, um, so they, and, and if you remember in the story, 
it tells the priest that they're supposed to carry the ark, right? So not the ark, not the boat, not Noah's boat, that, not that ark, but the ark that holds the covenant. And the covenant was the promise that God had with his people. So it's almost like, um, how can I explain the covenant? Um, I guess the covenant would kind of be like a, a book that was signed that had things written in it and God said, this I'm going to do for you. So it was something um, that they carried around that they could also, um, only the priests could read because they had to be clean. So only clean people could touch it. Okay. And so that's why the priests carried the ark. Which, what about the dirty people? Uh, if they touched it, they would die. So, and, and what I mean by clean, I mean people who cleanse themselves from sin. So, and back in the Bible times, the Old Testament Bible times, people had to make a sacrifice with animals. And we no longer have to do that because Jesus was our final sacrifice. So, when the priests are carrying the ark, they're not carrying Noah's boat. That would be way too hard to carry, don't you think? Carrying a big boat. But they did carry this big um case that held the covenant which is like the book that i was talking about that um what case is this yeah that's okay um that had it so let's see what happens let's see if joshua made his own plan or followed god's plan okay the Bible says that Joshua got busy doing what the Lord told him to do. Joshua trusted God because he's seen God's power before. Um, if God said he would knock down those thick Jericho walls, then that is what Joshua believed that God would do. In Joshua 6, verses 10 and 11, it says, Now Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout or make any noise with your voice. Nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shout, then you shall shout. So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city going around it once. Then they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. So Joshua put the soldiers and priests in line according to God's instructions. He told them exactly what God wanted them to do and how he wanted them to do it. How were the Israelites supposed to march? Were they supposed to make any noises and shout yet? Gavin? What? Were they supposed to make any noises or shout? Oh, Avery's doing a good job. Gavin, can you follow Avery and march like her? Quietly? You guys are doing a great job. Let's have a seat. Okay, so, um, have you ever had to go in a line and be quiet in the hallway? Has a teacher ever told you, okay, we'll line up, but we have to be quiet in the hall? And uh, not in your hotel? Not in a hotel? You went in a hotel with the teacher? Talk about at school. I'm in the hallway. On field trips? Um, I'm in the hallway. Yeah, and are you being quiet? Yeah. Yes. So... How would you respond if God told you to line up and be quiet? Would you be quiet? Yes. yes. So, the soldiers and the priests marched around the city one time each day for six days. And then they went back to their camp. I don't want to. Okay, you can just set it on the table. Okay. But let's get in a hall. Uh, that's to fill it with water. So that way it can freeze. Alright, so... Can you imagine what the priests and the army were thinking? They must have wondered, what are we doing? How is this going to accomplish anything? We've been out here for days marching around the wall. This is silly. And then what do you think the people inside the walls of Jericho were thinking? What are those Israelites doing? Are they afraid to attack? Blowing those horns isn't gonna help anything. Six days of marching had passed. And on the seventh day, the army and the priests marched seven times around Jericho. So after three or four hours of marching, they stop and they turn toward the city. And this time, they didn't go back to their tents. 
The priests blew their horns and everyone else shouted, finally breaking their silence. Joshua 6, 15, 16, and 20 are the verses I'm going to read. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day, they only marched around the city seven times. Oh, on that day only. So on the seventh day only, not the other days. The other days, how many times? The other six days, how many times did they march around the wall? One time. And on the seventh day, how many times did they march around the wall? Mm -hmm. Not one. The seventh day they marched around how many times? Six. Seven? Seven times. So, and the seventh time it happened when the priests blew their trumpets and Joshua said to the people, Shout! For the Lord has given you the city. And on verse number 20, so the people shouted, and when the priests blew the trumpets, and it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. So, scream. You ready to march around the city? Let's march seven times. Remember to be quiet. Ready? Shout! Shout! Oh, yeah! And down came the walls! Let's go take the city! How did somebody hear that? Yeah, maybe. So, everyone shouted, shouted, and the walls had fallen. So, God did exactly as he said. The walls shook, rumbled, and it came smashing and crashing to the ground. God did the miraculous. The soldiers climbed over the fallen walls and attacked the city and burned the ruins. Now, you see this right here? Yeah. That is also something. We're going to display this up a little bit closer that we can focus on. That's not, that's not the 12 rocks. That's not the 12 rocks, but this is the wall. And do you remember whose house was this? Jericho. Not Jericho. We're in Jericho. But whose house was it? The, the girl. The girl. And do you remember her name? No. No. This is Rahab. And what happened? There were two spies. There were two spies, that's right. And do you remember what the two spies and Rahab had talked about? Yeah. What did they talk about? They had, they were, they said, I need to hide. She, she, yes, they told Rahab that they needed to hide. And did Rahab hide the two spies? Yes. She did. But what did Rahab tell the two spies? What did she want? She said that Jericho was afraid of them and that they knew their God was powerful. So did Rahab believe in their God? Yes. She did. And what did she want if she was going to help them? Do you remember? 
She wanted her and her family to be protected, right? Yeah, by the wall. Yes. So. And that's a trumpet thing. So you see the walls. Yep, these are the trumpets. These are the ramcorn trumpets. And the walls came crumbling down. But what's still standing here? Rahab's house. Rahab's house. And you remember she put the scarlet thread outside the house to show her faith, right? And to show that that's where she's at. Um, that's just what they they chose to, for it to be. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So, do you remember what she did to obey the spies? She pulled down the thing. She had the cord out her window, right? And Joshua 6, verses 22 and 23, it says... Joshua had said to the two men who had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house, for, and from there bring out the woman and all that she has, as you swore to her. And the young man who had been spies went in and brought out Rahab, her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. So they brought her out, all her relatives, and left them outside the camp of Israel. So, what did Joshua tell the two spies to do? Uh, to hide? Not to hide. He told the two spies to go get somebody. Who did they tell him to go get? Rahab. Rahab. And who else was with Rahab? Her brothers. Her brothers? Who else? Her family. Her family, right? So her mom and her dad. So, and everything that they had, right? And where did they bring Rahab? Do you remember? I'll read it again. To the spies? Not to the spies, but the spies brought her outside the camp of Israel. So, where do they bring her? To my house. To whose house? To whose place? Where were they staying? At the two spies' house? Yes, so the Israelites, because the spies are part of Israel, right? So they went to their camp where they were camping, and why would they bring her there? Because they because she was nice. Because she was nice, and it's a safe place for them to be, right? Oh, so they wouldn't get hurt. So there Yeah, so you can see it here, but this is just a clear view, right? So, the two spies ran to Rahab's house. The spies rushed in. Would Rahab be there? Her home was inside the walls, but now the walls lay in a crumbled heap. They ran along the wall, and suddenly they stopped at the section of the wall with the red cord. God brought down the walls of Jericho, but he spared you because of your faith. Come, we'll take you and your family to safety, they said. And the spies led Rahab and her family to the Israelite camp. Rahab and her family joined the nation of Israel. They became followers of God, and Rahab is mentioned in the New Testament for her great faith. So, what an amazing victory, and what an incredible story and display of God's power. Why do you think God had marched around the city for seven days? What do you think? Do what? Why do you think God had the Israelites march around the city for seven days? To be repaired. To be what? Repaired. Repaired? Well, that was before the walls fell down. So why do you think God would have them do that? Marching. Yeah, why do you think God would have them do it? What do you think? Uh, to take over the kingdom. Uh, not necessarily. Why 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 don't you, why wouldn't God knock down the walls on day one? Why do you think God had him do it for for so many times? Yeah, I'll help you in a minute. So why do you think God had them do it for for so many times though? Could God have done it on day one? God could have done it on day one, but He did it because He wanted the people to show that they trusted God by their obedience. So they did. they did. Remember, they marched around six days quietly. On the seventh day, how many times did they march around? Seven. Seven. And they were still quiet. And then the seventh time, after they marched the seventh time, what did they do? They broke their horn. And? Shouted. Shouted. That's right. So did they trust God? Are those God's people? They are God's people. These right here are God's people going into the city of Jericho which was not God's people. So, did the Israelites obey God? Yeah. Yes, they did. So, let's see what is 
happening with our friends, Michael and Emily, Michael and Emily up here. Michael, Emily, Mommy, and Daddy were on a family vacation at the beach. One afternoon, they took a boat trip to a small island. They were going to hunt for shells. As the boat sailed through the water, the captain's voice came over the speaker. If you look on the left side of the boat, we have a pod of dolphins catching up to us. They like to swim alongside the boats, but watch out, they are excellent jumpers and splashers. Come on, Daddy, urged Michael as he tugged on Daddy's hand. Let's go watch. Michael shouted, look, look, I see one. Sure enough, just under the surface of the water lay a long, very slick body of hair. And then another, and another. Look how fast they swim. They're keeping up with the boat, Michael shouted. Just then, one of the, jump, one of the dolphins jumped out of the water and splash. He landed while still swimming alongside of the boat. Whoa, did you see that? Michael exclaimed. Mommy, Emily, come look. Mommy and Emily joined Daddy and Michael at the railing. They marveled at the speed and power of the dolphins. Aren't they beautiful? Mommy remarked. They make it look so easy, like they aren't even trying. And one of the dolphins seemed to be showing off. He would swim out away from the boat and then leap high in the air, do a half twist, and land with a huge showy splash. I never knew they were so big and fast, Michael remarked to Daddy. They are smart too, Daddy added. They have their own language. They make sounds of clicks and whistles so they can talk to each other. They can see better than people can, and their ears are so good they know when fish are nearby. Wow, dolphins are amazing. I didn't know they were that powerful. I think dolphins might be my new favorite animal, Michael declared. And just think, added Mommy, God created them with his spoken word. God is more powerful than any of his creatures, for sure, Daddy agreed. And that's why we can trust him and his word. We learned about God's power in Sunday school, Michael remembered. Joshua trusted God for victory over Jericho. God showed his power by, by causing the walls of Jericho to crumble down. Let's thank God for the dolphins and for reminding us of his power, Mommy suggested. Dear God, thank you for protecting us on our boat ride today. Thank you for letting us see these powerful and playful creatures. Help us to remember to trust you, our powerful creator. In Jesus' name, amen. And suddenly, three dolphins jumped out of the water all at the same time and landed with a huge splash. I think they said amen too, laughed Michael. So, what did the family see on their boat trip? Where are these, Avery? Dolphins, good job. I'm and gonna be quiet. That's okay. And what did the dolphins remind them of? The city of Jericho. Not the city of Jericho, but somebody's power. Whose power? God's. God's power, that's right. And why, who did Joshua trust victory over Jericho? Who did Joshua trust? My uh, why does God have the power? Why does God have the power? I don't know why God has the power. I just know that he does because that is what the word says. God's word says he has power. And so, what's his power? What's his power? He can do anything. Remember? He can make some food. Uh, he can make food. Do you remember what he, what they... Said about the make, dolphins. He, how did how did God make the dolphins? What did He do? Can He hide he, people? How did he, he How did He make he the dolphins? Spoke. He spoke, and then they were there, right? Yeah. Can He also make shoes? Uh, he can if He wanted to, but He also has people to help make things now, right? And He gives people the wisdom and the knowledge to make things and to do things, right? Yeah. So, um. But who did Joshua trust for the victory over Jericho? Did Joshua trust himself? No. Did Joshua trust his army? No. Who did Joshua trust? God. God, that's right. And how did God show his power at Jericho? You remember? Uh, what did they do? They, they were two spies. Well, there were two spies, and what did they do? They spied out the land, right? Mm -hmm. And what was there? When they spied out the land, how many walls were there? One. Not one. Two. 
two walls. And were the walls just these little tiny things or were they big walls? Big walls. They were big walls. So how did God show his power with those big walls? What happened? They knocked down. How did they get knocked down? And people screamed so loud. People shouted and they knocked down. Are we able to shout and knock down walls? You can scream really loud, but does it knock down a wall? Yeah. No. It can knock down a wall. The only way you are going to scream and knock down a wall is if God's power is with you and he tells you to do it to knock down a wall. Otherwise, what do we need to knock down walls here? A bulldozer. A bulldozer, that's right. So those are what comes with the walls crashing down, right? So we need a big truck in order to knock down walls because we can't just shout and have the walls knock down themselves. Jesus. So let's do our memory verse. And then I will tell you too, okay? Can you guys say Psalm 147, 5? Great is our Lord and mighty in power. Psalm 147, 5. Let's say that again. Psalm 147, 5. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. Psalm 147, 5. All right, friends, we'll see you next week. Goodbye.